Well, hello, hello, everybody. My name is Shay Too Sweet. You can call me Shay for short. And in today's video, y'all requested it. All right. So remember, if it sucks, you asked for it. It won by 50%. <laughs> we got SpongeBob Conspiracy number two. Links for the original creator will be down below. I'll be a resident black friend talking through the whole entire thing. Hey, look, look, I have got a black friend. So before we jump into it, before we jump into it, let me just be honest and serious, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, give me a minute. Before we jump into this, I'm gonna say the following. I'm going to rip every argument he has apart. It's just it's just because here at Shay Too Sweet Incorporated, we defend villains or people that Shay Too Sweet deems are hot. So if it's a villain, I'll defend it. And if if I think the person's hot, I'll defend that too. This is all I'm trying to say. No disrespect. So um if you have a problem with that, then then you need then you need to go consult somebody who gives a fuck. <laughs> Oh, that's an ugly noise, son. Here, how about you cease this bitch crying? All right, so let's hop into it. I got my black rifle coffee on deck, so let's go. It's not what you think it is. Oh my god, that shit good, bro. America, fuck yeah. United States of America. This is not an ad placement, but I would love to be sponsored by them. Let's go. The show Spongebob Squarepants is not what you think it is. There is a secret group of puppet masters who are always watching the citizens of Bikini Bottom and pulling the strings. Hidden within Bikini Bottom are spies that keep an eye on the characters and make sure everything goes to plan. This is a conspiracy that will fundamentally change the way you look at the show Spongebob Squarepants, and I believe it's all actually intended by the creators. And I'm gonna prove it. This is the television theory. Okay. You guys had a great reaction to my Squilliam Fantasy Theory, and I had a lot of fun making it. Squilliam, you lying, deceiving bastard! I didn't even realize that! But trust me- Hearsay. <laughs> when I say that what I've discovered this time is much, much bigger. To start yeah, this theory, me. we have to go back to the very beginning of the very first episode of SpongeBob SquarePants. Ah, the sea. So fascinating. So wonderful. Here we see Bikini Bottom, teeming with life, home of one of my favorite creatures, SpongeBob SquarePants. Yes, of course he lives in a pineapple, you silly. So let me ask you a question. Who's speaking in this clip? Well, obviously that- Someone re that retreated from a world war. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> okay, the French. Whatever. Close enough. It's just the narrator. We hear his voice many times throughout the show. Ah, uh, Goo Lagoon. A stinky mud puddle for you and me. Ah, uh, the crusty crab. Through these doors pass all the many kinds of undersea life. Pops boating school. Where diligent students learn the rules of the road. But who exactly is the narrator? Well, he's just the narrator, right? We're not supposed to think about who he is or why we're hearing him. Lots of shows have narrator framing devices we're not supposed to think about. Caillou was amazed that mommy had made a rainbow, just like in the picture. But Caillou had a big ass head, dog. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Exhibit A, look at that big ass head. <laughs> My bad. My bad. They could have put an ass on her a little bit. I mean, she got a little bit of one. It it only comes in a little. Like, it do some shading for that ass. There you go. And put a hat on him. Cut that forehead. You know what I'm saying? Just cut the forehead so the guy, so he can have a normal life. There you go. Amazed that mommy had made a rainbow. Just like in the picture. But there's something different about this narrator. He sounds a lot like he's narrating a nature documentary. The ocean. From above, a simple blanket of water. But below, a complex world full of color, life, and wonder. Ah, the sea. So fascinating. So wonderful. Here we see Bikini Bottom. 
teeming with life. What if I told you that he's not just some random disembodied voice, he's an actual character in this universe? Here we are again at the Bikini Bottom Boating School. Today is once again the day of SpongeBob's boating school exam, but more importantly, this is the last test for the year, and if SpongeBob does not pass this one, it means another whole year of boating school! Aww. SpongeBob literally crashes into the fourth wall, and we actually get to see the narrator and the camera he's been filming with. The show SpongeBob. Well, I don't know who I'm going to be defending in this, but I I'm going to just say this really quickly. Uh, the narrator, why the if he knows SpongeBob can't drive, why the hell is he on the track? I'm, I'm just going to put it on that. Like, just going to be honest and serious. Let me say this. Ordinarily, I'd feel really bad for you. Bob SquarePants is not just a cartoon. Everything we see is a part of a nature documentary television show being filmed by scuba divers. And if you're still not convinced, I searched really, really hard and found an old SpongeBob DVD bonus feature that basically confirms everything. Since before time even existed, land-loving scientists have tried to learn the secrets of intelligence. Their studies led them to the sea, where the citizens of one undersea colony demonstrated a genius so enormous. The si oh, you can't say that joke. That joke was sexist. Oh, that joke was so sexist, but it was gonna hit. It was gonna hit. It was gonna hit. Right when I, because I saw it was a woman, and I was like, oh, intelligence? Why the fuck are they using a woman? <laughs> Oh man, god damn. Man, sorry. I had to get that joke off my bed. Their studies led them to the sea, where the citizens of one undersea colony demonstrated a genius so enormous, the scientists felt compelled to record their actions for use in teaching mankind how to live better. The name but this nigga was clearly lying. The name of this miraculous place, Bikini Bottom. Poring over the mass of brainy masterminds scattered about this strange land, the scientists chose six Bikini Bottom residents at random to study. As the scientists marveled at the advanced knowledge and superior intellect of these six creatures, I went to college! They rolled their cameras and took notes. And now, finally, we can learn all of the things that these smarty pantses have to teach us. Life lessons from Bikini Bottom! I don't know how it can get any more clear than that. Now if you rewatch the show with this new information in mind, some things start to take on a whole new meaning. Throughout the series, there's this weird unexplained running gag of a human hand interfering with the characters. It's even in the beginning of every episode in the intro for the show. Maybe the filmmakers are doing a bit more than just studying these characters. The hand seems to mostly interfere just to maintain the health and safety of the characters, like treating Spongebob for the suds. Well, Mr. Squarepants, it seems you have the suds. Are you ready for your treatment? Oh, Hans! It makes sense that the filmmakers wouldn't want to risk the safety of their main character. After all, there's no show without Spongebob, but that's not the only reason why they interfere. Mm. Season 3, episode 16, I Had an Accident, is infamous for having one of the most absurd, confusing endings in the entire show. It ends with a real gorilla suddenly coming out of a Patrick costume and attacking the characters. A real gorilla? Then as soon as Spongebob begins to question the logic of the scene, this happens. What's a gorilla doing underwater in the first place? Oh, uh, well, it, it's funny you should, I mean, the, see the, the, George, they're onto us! Let's get out of here. Spongebob is a weird show, but this has always stuck out as being just a little too weird. But knowing what we know now, I think I can explain what's going on here. This isn't a real gorilla. Every other land animal no we shit. see underwater wears a helmet <laughs> and is drawn in a car- I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This isn't a real gorilla. No shit. <laughs> cartoony style. The gorilla is shown in a live action style, and the only time we ever see live action characters is when they're human. So, I believe both the gorilla and the horse he rides away on are humans wearing costumes. 
the filmmakers set this whole thing up just to make the episode more entertaining. It's starting to seem like this isn't strictly a nature documentary anymore, it's more of a reality TV show made for entertainment. Who knows what other absurd elements of the show are actually put there by the filmmakers to make the show more entertaining and profitable. Although, based on the people's reaction, it doesn't always seem to pay off. But how far will the filmmakers go to make the show more profitable? Ah, uh, Saturday morning in Bikini Bottom. SpongeBob is watching his favorite Saturday morning show, The Adventures of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy, enjoying a bowl of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy brand cereal, and wearing the official Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy breakfast fighters. If we think of this as a television show, this sounds an awful lot like a product placement. I mean, listen yeah. to how the narrator specifically says the full names of the products. The Adventures of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy brand cereal. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy breakfast bikers. Why don't you let me fix you some of this new Mo Cocoa drink? All natural cocoa beans from the upper slopes of Mount Nicaragua. No artificial sweeteners. Oh, she is... She... Blink twice if you need help, bitch. Help me! Help me! Nigga! Ah. Uh -huh. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Who are you talking to? Maybe the Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy TV show is actually from the surface world. They are human after all. It makes sense that the filmmakers would choose to highlight these popular superhero characters. The more they show, the more they're gonna sell Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy merchandise. Hang on a second, why are Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy the same size as all the fish in Bikini Bottom, even though humans are always shown as massive compared to fish? Uh, wh whatever, I'll, I'll come back to that one later. The show doesn't even just hide product placements. In the episode Model Sponge, they literally trick Spongebob into making a commercial for a human product. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. Director. Mm. Very well. Loose the pants! Um... Uh, I'm sorry, um... What? There's my star! What's happening? What's happening? In this sea, you'll be cleaning bathroom fixtures. Okay. So where's my cleaning utensil? Don't you get it? You are the cleaning utensil. Rush speed! Oh no, your bathroom is a disaster. Get it cleaned up fast with the new sponge. <laughs> Household chores are a snap. What the fuck? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's weird. It's weird to me because if if we're treating SpongeBob like a person and he just got dunked in the water, slight waterboarding is happening right now. Boy, that escalated quickly. And they stripped him naked to do it. It <laughs> I don't know, am I the only one that feels fucking awkward? New sponge. It clean seats. <laughs> Just look at that shine. This is just like in real life how Spongebob is such a popular character that he's used to sell tons and tons of products. So far I've shown you that the show Spongebob Squarepants is actually a documentary television show, but the creators continually interfere to push their own agendas and make more money. But so that brings us to a an important question. Show. Do the characters know they're in a television show? Let's go back to that clip where Spongebob hits the cameraman. It means another whole year of boarding school! Aww. Hey, Dad! What happened? Oh, nothing, SpongeBob. You just struck another pedestrian. Mrs. Puff calls him a pedestrian, which sounds more like she thinks he's just some random Bikini Bottom citizen. The different types of marine life in SpongeBob are so diverse and weird looking that it's not too hard to believe that the characters just think these filmmakers are another weird type of fish. And back to the gorilla episode, the gorilla and the horse immediately get nervous and run away when SpongeBob questions what's going on. <laughs> Uh, well, it, it's funny you should, I mean, the, see the, the, George, they're onto us! <laughs> Let's get out of here. Almost like the creators don't want the characters to be aware their lives are being interfered with. Now, there isn't a ton of footage of the characters interacting with the filmmakers, but I dug really, really deep and found the smoking gun that answers all of our questions. This is an old commercial from 2004 made to promote the Spongebob movie. <laughs> Spongebob. What kind of jellyfish is that? It's not a jellyfish, Patrick. It's a spaceship. Oh. How the 
fuck do I know hey about guys, space? Hey guys, from the zone. I was wondering if you could answer a few questions. Questions? Run for your lives! No, Pat, don't you see? It wants to learn about our world, and it's chosen us. But yay! <laughs> We've been chosen. A submarine comes down to SpongeBob and Patrick to ask questions to promote the new movie. SpongeBob and Patrick are clearly confused by this and think the submarine is some kind of alien. They also have no idea that they're the stars of a movie. Well, thanks guys. We'll see you in the movie. Bye! Movie? What's that? I don't know. So it's basically a child actor. It's basically a YouTuber. <laughs> It's basically what it was like one of those family channels that start like have right right when they have a baby or something the baby's like the main draw of their channel The baby don't know what the fuck's going on, but the baby's getting millions and millions of views <laughs> Oh that got dark, okay <laughs> So I think it's pretty clear at this point that the characters are unaware their lives are being filmed and interfered with. But there are some characters that have to have some level of awareness. For example, the doctor fish that told the human hand to treat Spongebob, and the director fish that directed the commercial for the human world. What makes these characters so special? First off, the director fish isn't actually from Bikini Bottom. Before he directed this commercial, we saw him as a citizen of New Kelp City in the episode Whatever Happened to Spongebob. Out of all the characters they could have used, they specifically chose a character from out of town. Almost like the filmmakers didn't want to use anyone in Bikini Bottom so they wouldn't risk everyone finding out about the television show. Oh. Then there's the Dr. Fish. We don't know where he originally came from, but he's an extremely suspicious character. Usually he's purple, but sometimes he's orange, sometimes he's purple with orange hands, sometimes he's a pirate, and he bears a striking resemblance to Dr. Manowar from the Jellyfish Convention. And now it only hurts when you touch him. <laughs> touch. Why does he have so many different disguises and identities? What is he hiding? I believe hidden throughout Bikini Bottom are spies like this who are aware they're in a television show and keep tabs on the main characters and make sure everything goes to plan. There's so many suspicious characters in Bikini Bottom that it could literally be anyone. The mailman, the hot dog vendor, old man Jenkins, it could literally be anyone. But what if I told you that the biggest spy of all isn't some random side character, it's one of the main characters of the show. Someone who's been there from the very beginning. Someone who's not even from Bikini Bottom. Uh... Someone who's not even from the ocean. That's right. Sandy Cheeks. Okay. Sandy Cheeks is the thrill-seeking scientific squirrel from Texas who lives underwater in her tree dome. But why did she come to Bikini Bottom? In the episode Chimps Ahoy, we find out she was hired by a group of chimpanzees to come underwater and create inventions. But why does she need to be underwater to make inventions? She Back. could have just as easily have made any of her inventions on land. It must be extremely expensive to maintain a giant dome of air underwater. There is no way the only reason she's here is to make random inventions. I think this whole episode is an elaborate ruse to throw off the other characters from the real reason Sandy is in Bikini Bottom. To spy on the main characters and make sure the show stays on track. Many of the times the characters are in danger, Sandy conveniently steps in to save the day. And many oh. of the wacky, entertaining episode plots are driven by an invention Sandy creates. Everything she does is a calculated move to carry out the <laughs> hidden agenda of the filmmakers. Her entire friendship with Spongebob and the other characters is built on a lie. But you're probably saying, Sandy is a sweet, friendly squirrel. So she's like, so she's like a producer, more or less than like a spy. It's like, like... Like, yeah, to make sure they're on track. So that reminds me of, like, a producer role in those, uh, like, reality TV shows. Like, like they have, like, a, I wouldn't say, like, a set script, but they have, like, it's, like, very, uh, loose, like, okay, we are proof to film in this area, this area, this area, this area. So they conveniently go to this area, this area, this area. And it has, like, plot A, plot B, plot C. So it can be structured. Okay. Nice work, Brain. You're welcome. There's no way she's behind this. You're not convinced yet? That's okay. Because what I'm about to show you <laughs> is so mind-blowing, so insanely revealing, that it's actually the whole reason I decided to make this video. Get ready for the big one. Season 10, Episode 10, Feral Friends is the episode that unlocks this entire mystery. During a birthday party, a green moon suddenly appears and turns everyone except Sandy into less evolved, real-life versions of themselves. Sandy is completely caught off guard by this and decides to call someone for help. And take a guess who she calls.
Hello, French narrator speaking. Hey, Frenchie, it's me, Sandy. Ah, Sandy Cheeks. How is it hanging? Oh, it's not hanging too good, Frenchie. You see, there's this... Don't say another word. I have been monitoring the behavior of the green moon all day. You are a whole stalker! Huh, yeah, I guess that's a pretty interesting clip, yeah. Holy shit! Sandy literally calls the narrator to let him know what's going on and ask for instructions on what to do next. She has been working with him the entire fucking time. He even has a picture of her on his desk. So is the narrator, is the narrator into Sandy? The world may never know. This is where I originally planned on ending the video, but... There is still one small issue with the television theory. Just one nagging plot hole that contradicts everything. If this is all a television show filmed by scuba divers, then how are we seeing inside the buildings? It's not like any of the humans filming the show could fit inside them. It's the one annoying thing that keeps this theory from being complete. I mean, the most logical explanation is that they have hidden cameras in everyone's homes, but we never really see anything like that. What are you talking about? Holy... Shit. Yes, I do. Season 6, episode 24, Truth or Square. The SpongeBob 10th anniversary special where they reveal lots of stuff about the characters. But the most damning piece of evidence comes from when the characters get lost in the Krusty Krab vents and end up in a room full of monitors showing live footage of all of their homes. Oh! My house is on TV! All of our houses are on TV! Gary the snail, you get down from that bed this instant. Hey, there's my house. Look, it's Sandy. <laughs> and who is the character responsible for all of these hidden cameras? Mr. Krabs, why do you have cameras watching us? No, but, uh, money. I this one thing I've learned, bitch, this game is about motherfucking money. Just want to make sure you all floss after every meal. Thank you, Mr. Krabs. Dental hygiene is very, very important. Dental hygiene? Eugene, you lying bastard. <laughs> of course he would sell out his friends for a but quick buck. Exactly. And if there's any part of you that thinks there's some chance Mr. Krabs has all these hidden cameras for some other reason, then take a look at what happens next. Hey, who are those guys? I think it's us, Patrick. But who are they? <laughs> All right, they're not even trying to hide it anymore. <laughs> a cameraman and a boom operator have been following around the characters this entire time. And just like the gorilla, as soon as they get seen, they make a run for it. The case is closed. The television theory is something the show has consistently alluded to from the very first episode to the newest episodes. Maybe one day the show will actually directly address it and our characters will discover the real truth about their world. But regardless, that's my theory. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you think in the comments. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more. See you next time. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on a second. Okay. You thought I forgot about the Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy thing, didn't you? All right, here's a quick bonus theory. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy were two superheroes that fought crime underwater and protected the sea from evil. Whether or not they actually did this or it was all staged for television isn't clear, but they both spent their lives underwater until they became old and retired. But after spending so much time under the sea, they no longer fit in with human society. Plus, Mermaid Man is clearly dealing with some form of dementia and PTSD from fighting evil. But you can't retire! There's evil afoot! What? <laughs> evil! He got PTSD like a motherfucker, dog. So, they decided to live the rest of their lives in Bikini Bottom. And in order to fit in better with their fellow sea creatures, they made the permanent decision to shrink themselves using Mermaid Man's shrinking belt. The case is closed. Again. <laughs> well, who? That, that... Those were theories. I can't even, I, I didn't have a lot of things to argue against that one. Uh, I mean, it's kind of, the case is kind of, like he said, close. I mean, besides like, besides like uh, this theory for SpongeBob, what do I think about it? I mean, I never thought about, I never actually, I never gave it a second thought that everything was framed in like a T like a tv narrative because when i watched spongebob i was like a really little kid and everything else and me being a military brat like like cable was uh was a luxury <laughs> it was a luxury as in we only had about 
we only had about like maybe uh, we only had to we only got we only got to watch TV for about like an hour and then it was it was the uh, about an hour hour and a half so I would watch SpongeBob Rocket Power and um Hey Arnold so like watching all those TV shows and then my dad's like hey yo cut this shit we got dinner time <laughs> and then dinner time after I go to Taekwondo practice or homework and then bedtime so. I never gave it that much thought when I was growing up because I was just like, I was just like, oh, this is cool. Is he's a sponge. I like the color yellow. He's yellow. Perfect. So, I mean, hey, I mean, people got to make their money, man. Hell, Kris Jenner sold out her whole family. So why not, why not Mr. Krabs sell out a whole bunch of people he he knows, he barely knows. I mean, I ain't got that guilt money, I'll give a fuck. And people gonna be like, well, he does know them. He lives right beside him. Chris Jenner, Chris Jenner exploited her whole family. And look at the Kardashians now. Come on now. He he just wanted to be the next Chris Jenner. He wanted to make that money. <laughs> I make that dollar, your motherfucking money. <laughs> so, again, my name is Shay Too Sweet. You can come, woo. My name is Shay Chusa. You can call me Shay for short. And like my grandmother always says, 